have my hair in a ponytail and then I decided I hated the way that looked on camera and then I put it down and this is what happened so anyway hey guys it's Sarah and welcome back to my channel so today I wanted to go ahead and talk about one of my more recent reads which was and you've heard me say this on my channel a billion times because I had a hard time finishing at first if we were villains by M. L. Rio and if we were villains as I've said previously and I think two of my videos falls a very similar plot line to The Secret History by Donna Tartt. It is also a campus novel that follows I believe five friends Oliver, James, Meredith, Pippa, Alexander and there's also a more like sub character Colin and it follows them at this elite theater school in Iowa as they train to be actors. Their school specifically focuses on Shakespeare. It's been a long time since I read The Secret History and I'm not really sure if that one followed a theater route of just Shakespeare or if it was more broad. Of all, Oliver, just like the protagonist in The Secret History, is one of the students who isn't extremely wealthy this is an elite school thus a lot of the students are extremely wealthy and they have the privileges that come with that oliver is not so we do get that perspective and the novel itself centers around the pressures that the school puts on the students and how they're present and the way that they react to one another can be intermingled and mixed up with whatever Shakespeare plays they are reforming. Um, it takes a very method way, uh, like method acting way of how actors are supposed to become their characters. And yeah, even one of the professors Guinevere want to say is like, you know, your character is 50% you and then 50% of its own thing. You do bring whatever you have within you onto the table, but it, it, the character also becomes you in a sense. And so of course that causes some chaos and the novel is based around figuring out what brought that chaos to be and just living through that. It opens up with our main protagonist, Oliver, being interrogated in prison by a police detective about what truly happened that night, quote unquote. And it's strange. So when I first started reading this novel, I had other reads that were much more intriguing to me because I liked the idea of this, obviously, if not, I wouldn't have checked it out. But I wasn't like moved to like read it. So I was dragging, I like read 40 pages and I was just like not feeling it. I even contemplated DNFing it. But then I like just put it on the back burner, started reading a completely different book and came back to it, started it all over. And oh boy, like the second time around was just like so, so, so much better. I still thought when I was reading it that it was going to be like a three or four star. But the way they tied the whole story together with the ending, like, I think I'm partially a sucker for that type of stuff. I'm not going to say it because spoilers. <laughs> um, but yeah, I ended up giving it five stars. Uh, Lulu, you okay? My cat just ran into the window. He's not. He's a jumper in training. <laughs> so the way it tied together, I don't know, just really spoke to me. So I ended up giving it five stars, just the inner relationships between all the characters. And I like the way the author really did incorporate actual like Shakespeare text to the novel. It added a little something. And yeah, it was just good little, little, little read. I don't know if I would reread it, to be honest with you, even though I really did enjoy it. Maybe I might, but it was just a good, reading experience. Let me get some quotes for us because you know I always read quotes to you because that's kind of my thing somehow. <laughs> Let's see. The marble floors had been polished to such a high shine that the party goers might as well have been walking on mirrors. Weeping fig trees which grew out of deep square planters in each corner were bedecked with tiny white lights and strands of ribbon and wire that sent flashes of gold darting across the room. The chandeliers, strung on thick chains that stretched from wall to wall, ten feet above the balcony, let a warm glow fall across the crowded floor. 
Tables cluttered with bowls of punch and platters of tiny old divs lined the west wall, and the students who had already clustered around them like moths around a lantern. Everyone was dressed in their absolute best, though their faces were hidden. The boys all in their white bata masks, the girls in small black moretas. The masks were overwhelmingly elaborate by comparison, made to stand out in a sea of blank, anonymous faces. The orchestral students had gathered on one side of the room with their instruments, sheet music propped up on elegant silver music stands. A waltz, airy and beautiful, swelled under the ceiling. As soon as we entered, crowds turned towards us. Alexander went immediately forward into the crowd, a tall imposing figure in black and silver and serpentine green. I lingered at the door, waiting for the start, staring to subside, and then began a slow, inconspicuous walk around the edges of the room. I searched for sparks of color, hoping to spot James or Philippa or Meredith. As on Halloween, we didn't know how it would begin. Expectation vibrated in the room like an electrical current. My hand rested on the hilt of the knife in my belt. I'd spent two hours on Tuesday afternoon with Camillo, learning the combat of the play's first duel. Who was Talbot, and where had he hidden himself? I was ready. So that was the first quote, and here is the second quote. I slow down, come to a stop, frustrated by my inability to express myself, a frustration exasperated by the fact that, after ten years, I think of myself as an actor. Corbin watches me with keen, curious eyes. I wet my lips with my tongue and proceed more carefully. Our sheer capacity for feeling got to be so unwieldy that we staggered under it. Like Atlas with the weight of the world, I sigh, and the freshness of the air derails me. How long will it take, I wonder, for me to get used to it again? My chest aches, and maybe it's the unfamiliar purity of air, but maybe not. The thing about Shakespeare is, he's so eloquent, he speaks the unspeakable, he turns grief and triumph and rapture and rage into words into something we can comprehend. He renders the whole mystery of humanity comprehensible. I stop, shrug. You can justify anything if you do it poetically enough. So that is a brief taste of if we were villains. I think I have a few more, but I don't want to overwhelm you with quotes as I tend to do sometimes. Um, so yeah, have you read If We Were Villains? I know that uh, I first heard about this on Holly Dunn Design's channel, so I'll link that below. She really, really loved this. She wants to reread it a billion times over. Same thing with The Secret History. She's a big fan of campus novels. So have you read it again? Um, and if not, have you read any other campus style novels that you really recommend? I know I want to read the fantasy uh, series with the first one being The Name of the Wind uh, by Patrick Rothfuss, I want to say. So I hope that you guys are all well and have a lovely rest of the week.